We're in the Kaimuki area today. We took you along to places that are grab and go style. Gotta rephrase that quote. Life gives you lemons, make lemon peel icy. <laughs> We're featuring new eats, cheap eats, and OG eats. So you don't want to miss this one. Tastes like childhood. Ooh, it's a little sour and salty. What's going on, Foodie Johanna? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day so far. And for today's video, we are in the Kaimuki area. You guys know, born and raised right in this area. So we had to take you along to some new and old quick bites here in Kaimuki. We have a lot of new subscribers recently, so we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Amanda, this is Felix. Our channel is Amanda and Felix Eats, and we take you along on all of our foodie adventures. Yeah, guys, we're featuring new eats, cheap eats, and OG eats, so you don't want to miss this one. Still stay along for the adventure today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It means a lot to us. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and all that jazz. So hit that thumbs up and let's get into today's video because we're starving and I had a lot of coffee this morning and I'm ready to go. <laughs> and it's hot, so let's go. Let's go. This spot is super hidden gem. I mean, take a look at this. This is how you get here. It's not even street level. It's down here. Personalized, y'all. Oh, I could, can barely see it. Nice. Personalized, y'all. <laughs> right, let's get to eating. All right, guys, we finally made it to our dessert spot. So, legendary Kamuki Craft Seed Store, Amanda's favorite. Came here since she was a little, high like school? middle school, middle school, high school days. You know, this is her stomping ground. Kamuki area. Looks like the lines are crazy. So we're gonna get a collaboration they did today, Kamuki Craxi store with a famous, renowned, family-owned local ice sherbet. So stay tuned for that, guys. You don't want to miss this one. And it's limited edition, so hopefully by the time you guys watch this, they'll still have some left for you. So come check it out. They open at 11. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles, screaming out your name. It's like sweet and tangy. Thank you. It's mixed in with the icy. Okay. And then um, that one, they did a parade and then it's in the survey as well. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. So that's why, so they did a collab with yeah. them together. So the yeah. kaki mochi, the... Kaki mochi with the, the lihing sauce. The, the lihing sauce? sauce? When they ordered, they gotta ask for the lihing sauce. Oh, okay. So we make our own lihing sauce in house. And then they, we pour, so when you eat it, just pour a little bit to see how much you think you can handle. And okay. then it, it gets salty. Yo. But a lot of people like this stuff. Do you shake it up when you, you pour it in? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, shake it, yeah. Guys, we got the goods. We got the goods. Oh, man, we should've just done an episode on this alone. Oh my goodness, y'all. Hope y'all excited as we are because there's a lot of things to try, a lot of things to show you guys. We'll see you soon enough. And guys, you know I could not leave the crack seed store without an IC. Mm. This is the lemon peel sauce, guys. Ooh. And if you guys have ever been to Kaimuki crack seed store, you guys know that they make their own syrups in-house for their ICs. And this one is salty and sour. What, what was the, what is the, oh, just uh, talk about what we got today. So guys, this one is a strawberry Coke mix with lemon peel sauce, but this is pretty good. And if you guys are wondering, we got the hook up with the Asato family sherbet. Oh my goodness. So actually right now, Crack Seed Store and Asato family is doing a collaboration as we mentioned earlier, and there's six different flavors. And guys, the flavors are nostalgia to the max. And this is actually one of the flavors, but we had to get the icy as well. Ooh, I'm not really a strawberry person, more of a Coke person, but you know, your boy Felix likes the strawberry. Here, take a hit. So this is a first for both of us with this uh, lemon peel sauce. I'll talk about it. Oh man, this is right up my 
lemon peel alley if y'all know what i mean gotta rephrase that quote life gives you lemons make lemon peel icy <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say back in the day my go-to used to be coke float or coke with the Liheng sauce that was the bomb and you guys know was, back then it was like the little old Chinese guy everyone used to just call him uncle you know local style actually he did sell his business I think it was a year or two ago to a local family here on Oahu and they're actually our friends, guys. So big shout out to Liana and her family, the Fangs. Thank you so much for hosting us today. And we're so glad that the business fell on such great hands because they are keeping the tradition alive. You won't be missing out on the old stuff because everything there is still old school. You guys saw the old school scales and everything. It's still all there. So guys, I can't wait to find a place, try all of this for y'all. We got some OG, OG classics too that y'all mentioned in our last Cracksy video that we didn't get. So stay, stay tuned. Trust us. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna find a spot to eat and we'll see you guys there. See you there. Okay guys, so sanitizing our hands using the clean wipe. Thank you to Brandon so much. Clean wipes, y'all. <laughs> You're watching, Brandon. Shout out Orpak and Kelly. Kind of running low, hint, hint. <laughs> we did go to the Kaimuki area and we're still in Kaimuki. If you guys know which park this is, let us know down in the comments. I have been coming here literally summer fun when I was a kid. My family lives around here anyway, but yeah. We're in the Kaimuki area today. We took you along to places that are kind of like grab and go style. Yeah. Hidden gems, some OG favorites later. You'll see in a bit. We got it all today, guys. Let's get into the food. So the first place that we went to today was actually called Coco Bloom. And if you guys are familiar, what is that called? Kaimuki Shopping Plaza? Shopping Center? Uh, Wildlife Times. Well, there's like a little shopping center in the middle of Kaimuki on Wailai, off of Wailai, and I think it's 4th Ave. The Times, the Longs, there was the old diner back then. I forgot what it was called, but I remember going there as a kid, that little diner that was on the corner upstairs. Let us know in the comments if you guys know which diner we're talking about. Coco Bloom, it's a sando shop, a Japanese style sandwich little... I don't know, delicatessen type of place? Kind of like how we would have PB&J on white bread. Japanese would have tonkatsu on white bread. Not just any bread, it's Japanese milk bread too. So a lot of people in Japan, they're very like on the go types of people. So a lot of the train stations have like little areas that they can just pick up food for a quick bite. So this is one of the types of food that they have, the sandos. But here in Hawaii, we're not really on the go, but some of us are, you know? So that's why we made this type of video where you can literally just go pick up your food and rush to where you gotta go. Yeah, be on your way. Enjoy the rest of your day. As usual, they have an online website, order ahead. The man that I was trying to mention earlier, this place, if you don't know where, right next to Sacred Hearts. Basement floor, you guys saw on the B-roll. We went ahead and went on their website. We ordered ahead and we secured some sandos. And definitely, pro tip is to order ahead. So I ordered the egg salad sando for Amanda. You know, when there's a burger on the menu, y'all boy gotta order it. So I got their Menchi Katsu burger. What does Menchi mean? Minced meat, I believe. Minced meat katsu burger and the way they do their egg salad is so aesthetic look at that half boiled egg in the middle just off the bat i can tell this bread is nice and fluffy just the touch of it feels so soft looks very pillowy like i want to just snuggle in there <laughs> oh, mm. that looks good mm. This is like one of those quiet foods, y'all. No ASMR moment. They even cut off the sides of the, what's it called? The, the crust. crust. For Japanese sandwiches or sandos, that's a must. You gotta remove the crust, you know, because it kind of ruins the texture a little bit. Let us know in the comments below. Are you a crust on or crust off type of people? The way that that egg is nice and creamy, nice, very nice. Mm. Hint of that black pepper as well. It does have a slight salt flavor, which I mean, 
You can't not put salt on it. Very peppery too. How's the egg yolk? Really good. Is it yolky? Really creamy, really pillowy. Reminds me of a Japanese childhood I never had, but kind of reminds me of, mm -hmm. oddly enough, the egg salad sandwiches my mom used to make. That milk bread though, guys, is no joke. Slight sweetness to it, as opposed to traditional white bread. Mm -hmm. Really good. And our beverage of the day, because we had so much, we didn't bring our Cokes. Coco Bloom is also known for their drinks. So I ordered their Yuzu Lemon Sparkling Water Concoction. Come on, y'all. You know when there's lemon, I have to order it. Mm. So their lemon syrup is made in-house. They call it online strong sparkling water in quotation. I don't know what that means. It's uh, alcoholic. Oh, wow. Just by me stirring oh, it, it's like fizzing. Look at that. Ooh. That's nice and refreshing. I'm very thirsty. It's a very hot day today. Nice and refreshing. Mmm, this is good. I will say it does kind of taste like a Japanese, um, like a Japanese nodame, like the sore throat kind of medicine. Because <laughs> I think there's honey in here. So the yuzu and honey mixed together has that like medicinal oh. kind of taste. Oh yeah, that's right. It does have that slight honey taste. It kind of reminds me of those konbini stores that sells those uh, seltzers. Those are really good. All right, and of course, we gotta try the Minchi Katsu Sando. When I saw a Minchi Katsu Burger, you know I had to get it. They had a Katsu Sando too. I really wanted to try it. But compared to a Minchi Katsu Burger, come on now. Let me know what y'all would've gotten. Mm. <laughs> the chocho lip action was very, very, very oh. on point right there. Man, this is good though. You can tell he chocho lipped it oh. because all around his lip is all the sauce. Mm -hmm. You gotta try it. This is really good. That tonkatsu oh sauce with it is so good. I don't care how it's I look good. right now. When food's that good, it doesn't matter what you look like when, while you're eating it. The burger is nice and meaty. Really soft too. I wish we got it fresh. I wonder how crispy it would have been. Mm. Right? Oh my goodness. Honkatsu sauce they use, I don't know if it's in-house or not, but it's really good. It has like a zing to it versus like the store-bought kind. Mm. Guys, this is actually really, really good. To be honest, I did not have my hopes up for this one. I thought Menchi Katsu, Katsu hamburger, like how much better could it be? Is it that great? But man, this is packed with flavor. I can't <laughs> stop eating it. Coleslaw on it like balances out really nicely. You know, that heavy flavor of tonkatsu. It's really tangy, slightly, I don't want to say spicy, but it does have a- It's kind of vinegary. Yeah, it has like a kick to it. And guys, this Menchi Katsu burger is not dense. It's nice and fluffy. The patty itself is very, very fluffy and well made. You can even see like the, the ground beef, the onions. Little bits of onions in it. Oh my goodness. The sauce is nice and tangy. Like he said, it does have a little kick. I'm not sure what that's from, but very nice like Worcestershire. Am I saying that right? Worcestershire sauce? Worcestershire. Worcestershire flavor to it. I will say it goes perfectly with mm. the burger. The burger is a little bit like fatty but in a good fatty way. That's a really, really good sandwich. It's fried, but it's lightly battered too. It's not super heavy. The brioche bun, I wish it was a little thinner, but it's there. It does its job. It holds it all nicely. Look, no back spill, no back slippage. Perfect on the go food. So do yourselves a favor, guys. As usual, we link all the businesses, websites, or social media page in the description box down below. Try the katsu sando for us because we didn't get that today. Definitely get the menchi katsu burger because it's awesome. The egg salad, it's well made, but it's nothing like, you know, blow your mind. Felix says to get it so, but the menchi katsu though, this is where it's at. Sorry, Vaughn. <laughs> she couldn't make it today either. Oh yeah, she missed out on this one, y'all. And we got a dessert sando too, but we'll save it as a part of the dessert segment. All right, and the next place we went to, it was literally right next door. So how convenient is that? And the next place we went to is Higoto <laughs> Bento. I thought it was high because HI, like Hawaii Bento, no? Yeah, but then in Japanese it said high, but in Japanese lettering, which means he. Oh, we made the foolish mistake of not ordering ahead. So they did run out of things we wanted to try. Just be warned, if you guys have something you want to try from there, make sure you order it ahead of time, at least 24 hours in advance. Shout out to Ron Y for recommending Higoto. We have some awesome bentos here. And we tried to like just head down there and see what they had available. But they did have some awesome bentos though. So we gave it a try. Prices aren't too bad either. I think this hefty bento here was like 10 bucks, 12 bucks. We got the fish lovers with an assortment of fish. And and of course, I gotta have my meats, so I got a yakiniku beef bento. Y'all haven't noticed by now, it's windy today. 
they are flying a kite here, so. Yeah, so that's <laughs> always nice. And we got a nice view of Diamond Head in front of us. And the reason why I really love this park too is that it's very upkept. It's not dirty, it's very clean. From here, you can literally see Diamond Head and the ocean. Look at that, y'all. So what is this one? So this is the Yakiniko beef bento. It looks like nice slices of Yakiniko style beef. And it looks like pretty good quality beef too. I can see the marbling on the inside. Mm -hmm. Some fattiness there. Oh, it looks like it's topped with garlic chips. Looks oh. like aburi too. It's like slightly seared on the top. Oh, that's tender. Whoa. Oh. That mm. is really tender. Mmm. Ron, you the man. That's really good. If I could, I'd meal prep this baby for the whole week. They use a high quality meat here. And I like the little mm. side of vegetables. A little sad they don't have mac salad, but traditional Japanese food ain't gonna have mac salad. Nice sides of okazu, really fresh. And guys, we don't want to assume that everyone knows what a bento is, but in case you don't know what a bento is, Japanese style like takeout kind of thing. So like it comes, lunch to go. Yeah, kind of like lunch to go. Something that you can like pack and have it ready to go for lunch. Typically, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. So that's why a lot of times they use like meats that are already cooked on top of rice with some vegetables. They come with a lot of little side dishes. Let's try the fish one. Oh, and then this one looks more like a Japanese style. I guess yakiniku because it's a yakiniku style. It had some like more Korean-ish dishes, sides like the kimchi. But this even has like pickled vegetables. All right, guys, so onto the fish roulette. We got saba, salmon, miso butter fish, which is their known dish over there. Mahi mahi tempura and a shrimp tempura. I want to try the saba. It's an acquired taste. I will say. If you don't know what Saba is, y'all, it's mackerel. Some people don't like the gaminess, some people don't mind it. For me, it depends on how it's prepared. Mmm. Mm. I think it's misoyaki too. No. Yeah. This tastes very, very traditional Japanese style. And the fish is not like hard or mushy or overcooked. It's very nicely cooked, flaky, not too fishy either. So you know that's a good thing. I think it is fishy compared to other fishes. True. This one mackerel has a strong flavor. Okay, this one's a salmon. Salmon, the OG. Mmm. Mm. Huh? Teriyaki salmon. I can see this being in a meal prep. Make I don't think that's teriyaki. Is it? What was this thing called again? I like this Renko. thing. Renko. Lotus? Yeah, the lotus root. Oh, man. Let me try that. That's really good. Mm. Let's try some of that mahi-mahi. Mm. Sorry, not tempura. This is panko battered mahi-mahi. Mmm. I think this one is a teriyaki. Mmm, mahi-mahi katsu. Yeah, mahi-mahi katsu. That sauce is good. It's more like a, a mix between like a unagi sauce and like a sweet soy sauce. Yeah, I think it's like a sweet soy sauce, not really a katsu sauce. Okay, I'm gonna try the butterfish. Oh, so their butterfish here, one of the, the gentlemen was helping me, said it's like their namesake, like mm. this is what they're known for. Misoyaki. Oh, it's really soft and tender. Misoyaki butterfish. So it's nicely broiled too. I really mm. like here how the fish is like kind oh, of yeah. broiled and torched on the top. Oh yeah, by far my favorite. I wish they gave a bigger piece of that. It was like the tiniest piece on this platter. <sighs> Ooh, nice pickles with it as well. That flavor dangle. All right, so last time we had submarine temporals. This is more like the cruise missile tempura. Mm. Imagine eating all of this fresh when they just made it. They should open up a restaurant. Mm. It's pre-soaked in some tempura sauce, so it's not going to be really flaky and crispy. Oh my god, the wind was so strong, it took over our fan, knocked oh. it over. You could say the fly fan was flying. Yeah, my favorite so far is that misoyaki butterfish and the ribeye. If you guys don't really know what misoyaki is, it's like a Japanese style marinade with a miso paste or soybean paste. And then they marinate it and cook it with like sugar and median and these Japanese sauces. It comes out kind of like sweet yet savory. And because of that sugar content in it, it does get like a nice little char. If you cook it right, it's really good. And they cooked it right. <laughs> Let's get into the dessert segment, y'all. Because earlier, like I mentioned, I don't know if y'all have been paying attention. We got a dessert type of sandwich at Coco Bloom. They also do sweet sandals, guys. So make sure you take a look. They are most known low in stock almost all the time. So order ahead, like we mentioned. They are known for their strawberry cream sando. Look at this beauty. Isn't this thing precious? Like, I don't even want to take a bite out of it because it's so pretty looking. It's so simple, but yet gorgeous. And this is a dream from Japan because you can hardly find this here. This is very, very rare to find, I feel like. In Japan, they have a lot 
lot of places with this, but here there's not much. Oh yeah, now that you mention it. So sandals are everywhere in Japan. They're mostly known for like being at subways. Like when you get off the train, it'll be like a little shack and they'll have it all laid out. Bentos, sandals, like on the go. And this one is especially different because it is a strawberry sandwich kind of sandal. So it's very, very rare in Hawaii, I feel like to find. Manly ogre hands just smashed the heck out of this. Ooh, mm. Oh, 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 so much juice is coming oh. out. Mm. Oy. Oh, so good. This is really good though. Oh, it's packed though. It's, mm, that homemade cream cheese whip filling. Mm. Is it even oh, cream shit. cheese? Mm. Oh man, y'all. This mm. thing is hard to eat, but it is good. Homemade sweet whipped cream. Organic strawberry sandal. You can really taste the quality in this one. It tastes like a strawberry shortcake in a sandwich. I am telling you. That cream that they use and the strawberries are so fresh, so light as well. I do wish that they made it more than just for a presentation because I do feel like the presentation is very nice, but it's not very practical when you eat it. No, it was spilling out everywhere. Yeah, literally it's like all over my hands and all over the tablecloth. So that's kind of not practical, but it was really, really pretty to take pictures with. <laughs> we did Hidden Gem. We did quick bites, and now of course, the OG portion. Where did we go? Kamuki's Crack Seed Store. But guys, this place has been around forever since Amanda's early days. They have a lot of good Crack Seed stuff. We did kind of talk about Crack Seed, but honestly, we didn't really go full into depth about what Crack Seed was. And a lot of people in the comments were kind of telling us that the original Crack Seed was the seed, but back in the day, they cracked it. So that's why they called it Crack Seed. And a lot of people were saying like that their parents or when they were a kid they remember having to spit out the seeds and stuff so pretty much crack seed was brought over by the chinese immigrants during the plantation era like i mentioned this is like uh, asian kids candy store a lot of pickled goodies we got some different new ones today that we didn't try in our last video but we got wet leaking mango oh that's a local favorite of course og lemon peel for the feel what else we, we got today the King Mui. This one is actually my favorite one. I actually like the white Li Hing Mui over the red Li Hing Mui. Controversial, I know. What? You like the white one? I like the, well, taste-wise, I like the white one. But let us know actually down in the comments, do you prefer the white one or do you prefer the red one? Let us know. This one is the football. You guys told us to get the football, the oh, olive. Man. Oh man, a lot of y'all been telling us I like the football one. Get that football shaped looking one. So we did it for y'all. Is this the one? Yeah, I think that's the OG one. Yeah, this looks like a dinosaur egg. <laughs> and then this one here is, I believe it's the peach. I got peach Li Hing Mui too today. Since we tried some of these already on camera for you guys, the last crack seed episode, we're gonna try the more local OG ones. So let's start off with that football thing because a lot of y'all have been saying that was one of your nostalgic favorites. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like this. I'm a little apprehensive. I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> got a football size one. Wow, it smells really good. Oh yeah. It doesn't look that great. It looks kind of mm. weird. I like it. Oh, you know, honestly, I feel like I've had this before, like growing up. Yeah, I've maybe had this someone, too. Yeah, you know, maybe someone had to swap me, let me try one. This is really good though. I feel a little silly now for being a little, little chicken. Listen to your uncles and aunties. They know what they're talking about. It's not savory at all. Pruned, salted, very good flavor, slightly sweet. Has a nice chew to it, nice texture. It's just the outside texture is a little dry and rubbery kind of tasting. Not tasting, or uh, feeling, but. I do like the chew. It has a good chew to it. Not mushy. Nice chew. Kind of like a gummy, I feel like. King Mui. This is like a crack seeds na namesake. That's why it's called King Mui. This is the king of all plums. Amanda likes the white. I'm not sure. I forgot what the red. The red one's more sour, yeah? I feel like. This one is sweet and salty. Yeah. I might prefer the red one. Mm. This thing is so big. This was my favorite growing up, this white one. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Just as I remembered it. Oh, yeah. Like an OG. Mm. The good thing about this one, it's not overly salty, overly sweet, or anything like that. Tastes like childhood. Like Amanda said, I like it that it's not too salty. You guys remember growing up, it's whether or not you can tie the stem of a cherry into a knot. When Hawaii, it's whether or not you can clean the lihingwood pit, eat all the meat around it, spit out just a pit. Determines whether or not you're a good kisser. Amanda, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I also want to try the peach one. So Amanda thought this one was interesting. Peach lihing mui. Yeah, I never really seen it before, actually. Or is it right. just called salty peach? Go big or go home. Mmm. Whoa. 
Oh. Mmm. Wow. This is good. Wow. Ooh, it's a little sour and salty. That sour kick comes at the end though. It's yeah. odd. Usually it's sour first and then sweet salty. This is like sweet, a little bit salty first and then the sourness comes after. So it's like a dried but preserved or salted with that white lehing powder. But it has a subtle sweetness too. You can taste the peach and the chew is really nice. It's like a little chew texture to it. Oh, he got some seed in there. <laughs> this would be a good snack to eat like when you're just chilling, you know, like when you're watching Netflix or something because you probably won't get fat from this, but it's very, very like, I don't know, has that addicting factor to it. But what you will get fat from when you're snacking on during a movie is these bad boys. Come on, you know, y'all know what this is. If you don't, it's cocky mochi. Very, very local favorite here. I want to try it in its pure form first without anything. I haven't had these in forever. So here in Hawaii, kaki mochi or arare as we call it, is very, very popular. We like to put it in all kinds of stuff. We even make chocolate arare, chocolate kaki mochi. We put it in hurricane popcorn. I was gonna say that's my favorite, hurricane popcorn. That's foodie kaki, mm -hmm. all on buttered popcorn with the arare or kaki mochi. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, it's a Japanese rice cracker coated in soy, soy sauce. For you Japanese peeps, the senbei crackers, but broken down to bite size. I always found it weird that here in Hawaii, we call it kaki mochi, but in Japan, I think they call it arare. You got kaki mochi, but not just the kaki. We got it with what Liana recommended locals do, apparently. Sometimes I feel like we're not local enough. Where is it? Oh, Li Hing sauce. She said pour it into the kaki mochi. Shake it up and have yourself a treat. So she said a lot of her regulars, what they do is they buy this kaki mochi and then they pre-put this sauce in there for them. Since we're on the go, we should mix it on our own. So that's what we're gonna do today. I feel like I've had this before. I've had it in the powder form. The, yeah, the powder, powder. Li one, not the wet one. We're gonna mix it and shake it up. So the Kaimuki Crack Seed Store, they are known for their sauces. Like I mentioned earlier, they do put the sauce is in a lot of their ices and stuff, so I'm not surprised that they would offer this here. So wet lihing mui kaki mochi. Ooh. Mmm. Well, that's good. Oh, very interesting. The slight sourness contributes to this kaki mochi really well. Wow. It's like, I don't know what to think, but I can't stop eating it. I actually really like it. I can't tell if I like it or if I don't like it. I for sure like it. I don't know. I'm still confused, y'all. It's like, I like the individual flavors. I like the kaki when it's normal by itself, and I like the limu juice by itself. When you pull it together, it's like two things you like, but does it go together? I can see myself ordering this and then eating it in front of the TV for hours. <laughs> Alright guys, so if y'all been around when Will of Fortune still had Vanna White, well today we have Amanda White. So she's gonna be showcasing the rewards of today's show. So first up, what do we have Amanda? Wheel of Fortune! There's six flavors and they're all collaboration. Kaimuki Crackseed and Asato Family. So let's see, first one will be this one. Oh shoot, I can't grab it. Okay, this one. <laughs> e. <laughs> And what do we have there? Lemon peel strawberry flow. Oh man, couldn't have chosen a better first choice. So yeah guys, like we did get a flavor pack. Thank you again, Liano, for securing us the goods. We probably would not have been able to get it. Oh, we tried y'all. Oh, we just gotta breeze through this y'all. Right, right off the bat, I already know it's gonna be my favorite. Oh man. So Asato family, y'all been to Maui yet? Two sakas, goody goody. We actually went there. Yo, Goody Goody, which is like the sherbet, same thing like this. They were inspired by that, but there wasn't one in Oahu. Ooh, that's good. Homemade, locally owned, fresh. Oh, man. Very good strawberry flavor, hint of lemon peel, and nice ice cream in there. Just vanilla ice cream. Imagine like an icy float with a hint of lemon peel. That's exactly what that tastes like. Li Hing next float. Up. All right, next up, Li Hing float. So it looks very similar to the previous one that we ate, but the difference is that this one is actually Li Hing, which is like the salted, red plum versus the other one was flavored with lemon peel and if you guys didn't know an icy float or a float <clears> is when you have the icy and you put the ice cream on the inside so that's why you see some like white parts in here ooh, ooh. i think i like this one better than the lemon peel for the first time oh this one is really good the lehing goes really well with the strawberry mm -hmm. next y'all oh man these actually melted a lot quicker than we thought yeah we have a cooler full of ice with all of them inside we thought it was gonna hold up but king mui oh man the big boy. 
you guys have been paying attention, this is King Mui. This is their collaboration, Asato with the King Mui. So that King Mui and this Sherbert. Oh, he oh. even has a King Mui in there. Look at that. Nice. It's just peeking out in all its glory. Wow, this tastes just like the King Mui. Mm. This is really good. Ooh, if you like the more icy kind of, not really like milky, this one's for you. I think that's why it's still, it's more frozen than the other ones because I don't think it has much milk content. Okay. Oh, oh. What was that? This one. This is the one I really wanted to try. Li Hing Vanilla Float. If you guys remember, Blue Vanilla Icy is my favorite. So I really, really wanted to try this one. Oh, look at the color. Look at the color, y'all. I'm so sad that it's melted. Gotta take the first bite. Ooh. Oh, and that's a big bite too. I will say that is the prettiest one so far. Mm. Very patriotic. Sorry. Oh. Mm. This is literally my favorite icy in a cup, in a pint. I don't know, whatever size this is. A pint of my favorite icy flavor. Oh my goodness. That was really good. It tastes like blue vanilla icy, what slight taste like Li Hing. If you guys are not blue vanilla stands, what is wrong with you? Blue vanilla is the OG flavor, okay? OG, right here. Okay, Vanna White Felix. What are you grabbing? Oh, I prefer if you go by my stage name, Felix White, but they go ahead. Okay, this one that's spilling out. Stra Lemon peel, strawberry cola. Oh, whoa. Oh. Oh. What? That one's cool. It's like literally half half. This literally looks like an icy in a cup or in a pint in this case. Ooh, yep. It's very icy. Not this is milky. exactly like it. Mm. With Li Hing, the hit of Li Hing. No, it's lemon peel. My favorite is Coke flavor, so I gotta take a two for on this one. That's good. The strawberry is more of a goody goody strawberry flavor and that Coke flavor. Yes, okay. I really like that one too. Last one, y'all. Ooh, Li Hing Mui lemon peel gummy bear. Ooh. Oh man, this might be my favorite one. Oh. That just looks like a pineapple, mango, strawberry slush. Mango nada. Mango nada. But it's not mango nada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have a winner, y'all. Mm. Doesn't that taste like lean with gummy bear? Oh my God. It literally tastes like white gummy from Jamba Juice. And I do get that little bits of the lemon peel. The sherbet itself tastes really good too. What a, what a good way to end this one. Even if you guys can't get these specialty flavors from Asato Family or the Kamuki Crack Seed Store, just check them out because they're really great businesses. They're local businesses here in Hawaii, family run. And like I mentioned before, Kamuki Crack Seed Store has been there for literally generations. And we actually met a few of you guys outside and it's literally for everyone. Little kids, it's for us who were eating it since we were kids. It's for those even adults out there that love Crack Seed Store. Definitely check them out if you can. Even if you're visiting, it's a really great place to just see the local culture. You can meet some locals there as well. And Asato Family as well. They are a locally run family business. I believe they're located near the Pali Longs in Liliha downtown area. So make sure you check their Instagram or their website, whatever I have linked down below because you do have to pre-order. So Asato Family is not just a place that you can go up to the store and order your sherbet. You actually have to pre-order it. So make sure you figure that out. Stay tuned to their Instagram because they do announce when they drop their new flavors and when they have flavors available. So check their Instagram. It's almost like an exclusive sneaker drop. You know, you gotta always be on the lookout. <laughs> see when the next drop date is. Yeah, you can't just pull up to the store for these specialty items, y'all. Just check the link down below. It's yes. a lot safer. Whew. Man, y'all, that was a lot of sandals, a lot of <laughs> sherberts. A lot of King Mui and a lot of wind. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming along with us on today's foodie adventure. And we had such a great time taking along to eat some to-go, on-the-go food here in Kaimuki. Got quite a bit of food to show you guys and we hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, the heritage and all of Kraxi and Asato's Sherberts. Oh man, those were amazing. So guys, this is literally the epitome of Hawaii food culture, Hawaii cuisine, the Goody Goody and the Crack Seed store. So much heritage, so much culture in those items and also the bentos and the sandals. A bit of a Japanese twist, but here we do have a very large Japanese population. So they're really awesome, really ono. And a lot of people who live here really like eating bentos, especially on the go. So make sure you check out these places. We'll have everything linked down in the description as usual. 
and let us know what your favorite thing from today was. If you want to try out anything that we've eaten today, what is that? Let us know. Drop down a comment. We'd love to hear from y'all. So if you like this type of content where we show you the local food culture of Hawaii, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And the best way to support us is by hitting that subscribe button. If you have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot and it grows our foodie ohana. So let's add more peeps to the foodie ohana. Share with your friends and family. Share with the people you love and come and join our foodie ohana. <laughs> All right, y'all. Until the next one. See you guys. Have an amazing day. Bye, Peace guys. Out. They're out like... What? <laughs> kind of like out... <laughs> Fly oh, one shit. in. Like in Japan at the kombu stores. Oh. No, not kombu. <laughs> Kombini stores. <laughs> kombu is seaweed, y'all. Yeah, I know. Okay. My guess. It's a fat red ant. Oh. So this is an ant hill. Oh, man. <laughs> Coco Blossom. So now Isn't it Coco Bloom? Oh, a Coco Bloom. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Guys, of course, like we said, we did, we did the, uh, what do we do? Cracks. No, no, I'm trying to think. Wait, what was I saying? So this, so this is, this, uh.